Well, we're here with uh, Ben Rector, the newest uh, country star, as we can we can yeah we can say now. Uh, so tell me how the, how does that come about as far as uh, getting into the country singing, especially with Haley Witters? Yeah. So so basically, I've lived in Nashville since 2009. It's kind of a long time. A bunch of my friends uh, do country music. I grew up in Oklahoma. But the song really just came out of, so Dan and Shay asked me to support their tour and then told me that Haley was first of three. And I, my wife listens to country radio, literally, I was gonna say 24 hours a day. All our waking hours, it's on. There's like an AM radio in our kitchen. And so- um, That's old school. I know it really is. AM it, radio. I know, I know. There's a station she loves. It, it's, it's a great station. But I've known Haley's music. I knew her manager for a long time before he was managing anybody. And so when she was on the tour, I was just like, oh man, it would be so fun to sing a song with her because I really just love her music. And I was thinking initially just like, we would do it live, it would be fun, just selfishly, because that sounds fun. And then the song ended up being something we were both really excited about. So we are like, oh, we should do this for real. Um, but it's not like a conscious like, and now I'm doing this. It really is, I think it's probably rubbed off on me living here. Yeah. And I've written for country artists and stuff, but I think this is the first Thing that was like this is like a country song but somehow it felt like authentic to both of us you know what i mean i would have if she had been like i don't want to sing this <clears throat> i still would have done it so did, is it like how does that collab come about do you just reach out to her hey i think this is going to be something that we could do together yeah so uh interestingly i wrote it with the guy that plays guitar in my band and then another guy who's written for Haley before and so basically I, and I'm so terrible at this kind of stuff, but I was like, well, hey, like, give me a second. We wrote it and recorded it that day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'll, I'll send this to her manager. She was actually at that publishing house the next day and they played it for her. And it was like, I hope it's not over and overstepping, but we played it for her. She really liked it. And I was like, that's great. That's fine. But uh, it, it was actually, it was all super organic. Like there wasn't any... It, it was that like she showed up like the song she's like are we doing this and I'm like yeah let's do it so, so it's like the complete opposite of the Snoop Dogg uh, I mean a hundred percent which was like such a saga and that was honestly there's a little bit of this left over from that record which is like I just want to do things that bring me joy and like sound like fun and engaging uh which is why I was like it'd be funny to get Snoop Dogg on a song but then with Haley I was just like I would just love to sing this just say yeah yeah so I'm just trying to figure out how would you describe your your music as far as because like you're so all over the place. But the one word that just comes to me in my mind, it's like it's your genreless, but it's just happy. It's been very very kind of you. I think like when someone asks me like I don't know that I don't know like how would you describe your music? I usually would say it's like singer songwriter pop, but I feel like those two genres have evolved a bunch since I started doing yeah. it. So I think like, I mean, I would say it's like American music pretty much. Uh, some of it feels folky, some of it feels like a little bit country leaning, some of it's pop leaning. Um, and I'm not like consciously trying to aim at anything. It's just kind of, I grew up listening to like James Taylor and Billy Joel and the Beatles. And then as I've gotten older, listen to a bunch of other stuff, but it's just kind of in that realm. Like well, if James Taylor existed now, yeah. I don't know if he'd be a pop artist or folk artist or country artist. He would just kind of like be somewhere in there. Well, it's kind of like when you go back to 2009, when you're making that pivotal kind of jump into it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think kind of looking, listening to some other interviews, you were speaking how streaming and the internet was kind of evolving and mm -hmm. it kind of worked out in your benefit. Yeah, yeah. Kind of totally. explain it. And I kind of feel like that fits your track of, you can fit into any genre because of the nature of the internet. Yeah, so basically also good research, my man. I've got a lot more stuff. Oh, wow. We're, 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 much, much. we're gonna get into Euromart. Come much on. Much uh, yeah, so. Much respect. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically I was doing music professionally in college and uh, that's kind of like the tail end of when like that style of music was really popular and iTunes was coming up. And so basically I was just like, I think that I could try to build something outside of like a label. And we talked to labels on every record, but because of what technology was doing, it gave me kind of a platform to spread the music out. And if people liked it, they kind of would do that for you. And so that's, it really wasn't like a super, I wasn't like, I'm gonna be independent forever. It was just like the best opportunity for me. If you were an aspiring artist, kind of like going back to 2009, mm -hmm. would you tell somebody that, that just moved to Nashville in 2009 or in 2020? Well, the, the mindset of 2009 for you. Okay. And then today, somebody that just moved here in 2024 that is, was in the same position. I would say the landscape now is a lot different than when I started. So I feel like I 
keep the actual specifics. Like in 2009, I would be like, do these things. And now I'd be like, ah, make a bunch of TikToks. I don't know. But I think it actually does work. Yeah. I mean, I think in general, some of the principles are still the same. And I would say like, you need to, like you can't be too good. You can't make songs that are too good. Just be so persistent about like really sharpening them because I feel like it's it's really hard to like stay in there long enough with like song or record. But there's so many people trying to do it that the only thing that's gonna make it work for you is likely it being like so good that it's like a magic trick or something. And I just a lot of people I think are like, this is good enough, I'll just like record it and whatever. And it's like, no, you gotta like, every aspect of whatever you do needs to be like NFL level good. Mm -hmm. And you don't, not everyone is gonna be able to do that immediately, but like that needs to be your bar. And I think that because it's something that's not necessarily objective, it can be hard. You see something that doesn't feel like it's NFL good, that's doing well, you're like, well, maybe mine doesn't have to be like that. It's like, no, man, people need to be like, have you heard this? Yeah. So I think I would just, I think that's still the same. Because I think that there's a lot of people who are just like, I made a song, I think it's good, you should listen to it. But I don't think it works until people are like, you have to hear this. Yeah. And that takes, you know, a ton of persistence. And I think that that's probably still the same. Awesome. Well, last question I have, actually two. Okay. How would you describe love? And then the other question is, what's the last romantic thing you did for your wife? Okay. Well, good. These are, I mean, these are deep questions. I, I'm, I'm a deep interviewer. How, how I describe love. I mean, this is not a fun answer, but I think love is a choice and not a feeling. I think like, I, Hillary and I will joke a lot, like we really love each other, but the best part is that we like really like each other too. And I think that that's like, people maybe get those things if you're young or whatever mixed up. And I'm like, I feel like when we see people younger than us, like our babysitters or something, they're like dating somebody I feel like we're always like, just you do, you, do you like them a lot? Because that's really what's going to, you're going to spend a lot of time with this person. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I think in the long term, love is like choosing to love someone over and over uh, instead of being like, I'm bummed about this, about you or whatever, because there's plenty of stuff for everybody. Um, last romantic thing I did for my wife, this, um, this, uh, this is a good question. We go out on a date every Tuesday night. So we went on that date last night. Where'd y'all go? Uh, we went to Soho House. Very, very, it's not very fancy. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Very intimate. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of an open space. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, so we go out, we tried to go out every Tuesday. We started doing that after the twins were born. Okay. They're like, you need some time off. You got to. Because if you're not, you're just going to be like, Real sure. we never do that. You know, we're going crazy. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, Ben, I appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for such, such a great question. Awesome, man, well, I appreciate it. Best of luck. I know you're on the, the tour with Dan and Shay. Yeah. Hey, uh, anything else you want to promote as far as on the road, the concerts? No, Dan and Shay, they're doing symphony shows this summer. So if you're into orchestral music, check it out. We're going to be in some cities and some nice concert halls. Awesome. Like well, Ben, I appreciate it. And thanks, man. You're welcome. Yeah. In your eyes, you color up my world.